Hey, good morning, everybody. It is July 19th, 2017, and you're watching What's Hot on the Open here at MarketStream.Live. My name is Joseph Kizik with the Kizik Group Securities offered by MoneyBlock. Let's jump right into this hot earnings season. What's not hot is volatility. So, folks, that's just telling you that regardless of what headline you hear, geopolitical event or economic piece of data that comes out, there is not an expectation of big violent moves in the overall var- marketplace. That's represented by a VIX at 9.8, $9.80. We're talking single digits in the volatility or fear index. That doesn't mean become complacent because we do have earnings, so individual stocks volatility could be high, which, again, gives pause for a potential heightened sense going into and after that event. But with that being said, the general markets, for example, the Dow Jones Industrial, basically trading up 22. Uh, It's in a very tight range today. Uh, As you can see, what's holding back the Dow Jones? IBM. IBM had uh, solid earnings, uh, trying to paint a picture of a rosy future, but again, not explosive. People aren't buying it. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at IBM, which is a big uh, part of the Dow 30, uh, IBM right now is trading down Almost 4% down, five ninety nine six bucks on Big Blue. So that is putting pressure on the industrials, holding it back from its peers, one of its large cap peers, the S and P 500, up two tenths of percent. That's good for six sixty to the upside at twenty four sixty seven on the cash index. You're really seeing that it's continuing to challenge new highs in the S and P 500. We'll watch the volume, but again. Uh, While the earnings have been very solid, you're starting to see maybe some profit taking, especially since the fact of the matter is, is that we're not seeing a ton of catalysts. And in front of the ECB, they're going to be coming out with their policy statement. And uh, again, I think uh, right now investors are looking at profits that are pretty substantial so far in 2017 uh, post the election in November. Believe it or not, we're still talking about that. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that we're not seeing that proactive, pro-business agenda being uh, pushed through. No health care, no tax reform, uh, nothing to say uh, the least. Um, so I know it sounds like a broken record, but we have to basically look at it from that perspective. The NASDAQ continues to lead. All-time highs, and you're seeing it. The NDX trading up 19 today, large cap tech. It's riding a wave, man. Uh, you just can't fight it at this juncture. The last two weeks been nothing but upside after being challenged uh, towards the tail end of June and coming into July. But it is really uh, moving to the upside. Tech is the leader. Uh, and this is where you're going to want to keep your eyes. Uh, this has been the segment of the market that has been uh, taking the proverbial market on its back and moving it to the upside. Uh, the Russell 2000 is joining the party, up seven tenths of percent at 1437. You see, the small caps are moving despite the fact that we're having a little bit of a disconnect as far as policy uh, and the potential for maybe a little bit of a domestic unrest, so to speak, on uh, an earnings front, um, especially in a growth front. We're going to watch the numbers coming out globally, but the dollar weakness is giving a little momentum uh, at this juncture, but it's not really helping uh, here in the United States. So watching the Russell 2000, I think it's more of a lack of natural sellers uh, here in the small cap indices than new buyers. But we'll watch this one real closely. Uh, What is interesting is the crude action, trading at uh, 46.68, up 43 cents. Now, this is after the EIA just reported Uh, There was a draw of 4.7 million barrels uh, of crude. Uh, That's the third straight week of a draw, but it's scaling back. Still positive, though. We're seeing a draw. Uh, Gas, that stuff you put in your vehicle, uh, draw of 4.45 million and distillates at 2.14 million. So you're seeing a draw from historically high uh, inventories. But again, what I want to see is I'm going to want to watch the production numbers. I didn't see what the production numbers are, and I want to watch the Baker Hughes rig count, see if they're going to start slowing production. That could be a boost for oil. I do not have exposure at this juncture in oil for my clients. Taking a look at gold, you see that gold right now 
is uh, trading down. It's been under a little pressure, but still right at that 1239, 1240 mark. Uh, it's above its 20 day moving average, which is this green line. Watch uh, 1234. That's going to be a critical level for the bulls to uh, hold in the short term. I'm also watching uh, copper. Copper has been grinding in this range between 270 and 272, 273. Uh, a break in copper down into the 268, 265 level, that's going to put uh, infrastructure and material sectors under some scrutiny and potential pressure. Watch the move in copper. Uh, TLT, that's the bond ETF, basically flat. Um, prices are not moving in bonds. A little bit to the upside on the two-year, the 10-year, and the 30-year. We're going to watch this closely since the 30-year is still trading right at or around uh, a yield of 2.3%. It's at 2.27%. Uh, folks, this, this, the expectation by 2017 by most strategists was that the 10 year yield was going to be well above 3%. We're not seeing it at this juncture. Um, taking a look at some other names, let's take a look at a sector that I want to keep an eye on, and that's the transports. This is one that gives us a good pulse of the potential domestic economy here in the United States. And transports are taking it on the chin this morning. Now, they're bouncing off of their worst levels, but you've had some railroads come out, uh, specifically CSX, which we'll get to in a minute. But taking a look at the transport index, it's pulling back and now challenging its 20-day moving average at 172.40. Uh, with this move to the downside, short-term bulls in the transports are under pressure. Most notable move is CSX. Great earnings, um, but uh, I should say good earnings, but they are having slower uh, growth in the U.S. auto market. Uh, so that had put some pressure on the stock. Stock's down 5.33%. It's now blown through its 20 and its 50-day moving average with this move. Um, you're also seeing other components in the uh, transport ETF, like KSU, another railroad, now challenging its 20-day moving average. You're seeing Union Pacific uh, challenging uh, and now breaking through its 20- and 50-day moving average down um, 1.32%. And you're seeing United Airlines. Now, United did report, had decent earnings, but of course, they have the public relations nightmare of all the different fiascos they've had. And they're under a microscope when it happens. Whether you lose a dog or draw, pull somebody off of a plane or give some kid's seat that you paid for up to another customer and tell them you have to do it, boy, those are public relation nightmares that are going to be under scrutiny. And uh, the stock's paying for it. Uh, there also is a little bit concern about um, the, the average price that uh, per seat going forward. We're going to see how that actually works out. But it, the stock's down 4.26% at 75.54. And full disclosure, I do have my clients in this particular underlying. But I want to bring something up. Uh, because I'm seeing a little bit of a disconnect. As I said, the, uh, the transports are a critical uh, view into the domestic economy. And what I just put up as a blue line is the Russell 2000. This is the small cap index. This basically tracks all of the small companies and really domestically centric and sensitive uh, names. And one thing that you're seeing is there's a very large disconnect at this juncture today. Um, where the um, transports, which is this red bar here, they're going to the downside, and you have um, Russell 2000 or small cap stocks moving to the upside. Um, this is something that we haven't seen in this much of a disconnect in quite some time. Um, so not to say that this is law that they have to mean revert, but when you look at a weekly chart and just look back, uh, they've been moving in conjunction. Any weakness right now that I see in transports that has any kind of continuation to the downside, this could be a red flag for the small caps. And again, in full disclosure, I do have my clients po uh, positioned in the Russell 2000. But I want to just point this out that we're seeing um, a divergence from what has been a pretty correlated move to the upside by small caps and transports. Any further weakness in transports, that's going to spell maybe some trouble for the uh, small caps. 
Let's keep an eye on that. All right, folks, that's it for On the Open and what's hot here in the U.S. markets. Join me at 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 Central. I'm going to be taking a look at everything that's going on here uh, in the U.S. markets. And I'm going to talk about some cool strategies. See you then.